As the programming material says, I am one of the midwives of cyborg anthropology. Uh, so you may well know that Donna Haraway, uh, the biologist turned, uh, turned techno cyborg, birthed the notion of cyborg as we think about it with her cyborg manifesto that was published in 1985. Um, Donna and I encountered one another at a six week seminar called Science as Culture and Practice. And then again came together, um, let's see, this at a small seminar of anthropologists and allies, including Donna, to talk about the relationship between science, technology, and anthropology. And it produced this book, Cyborg, Cyborgs and Citadels, which was published in 1997. Um, Donna has gone on to think beyond cyborgs. The, the original idea that um, the image of the cyborg is about moving beyond the individual to think about connections that are more than individual. Um, she's moved in the direction now of the more than human. So um, building beyond the last message in, um, in Amber's talk, um, do we want to stop at, our, at the limits of our own humanity? Or would we like to embrace our connections to the more than human? So in 2003, she published this thin little tract called the, the Companion Species Manifesto. And this has woven into conversations that she and others have been involved in about how um, our connections to our future are going to depend on um, how well we ally ourselves with our more than human allies. Um, one of Donna's colleagues at University of California, Santa Cruz, anthropologist Anna Singh, has published this fabulous book about the Matsutake mushroom and its many connections around the world. Um, the subtitle is key here, On the Possibility of Life in Capitalist Ruins. So mushrooms um, and their allies like lichen love areas that have been disrupted or destroyed. That's where they thrive. So how are you feeling about the future? Does it look kind of like kind of rosy? Kind of maybe not so much, right? So um, the, the notion of how to survive this mess that humans have created partly through technological arrogance is one of the things that Donna and Anna and others are paying attention to. So um, what about more than human technologies? How is a Matsutake mushroom or a cow um, a technology? Um, if we think about the connections between each entity and its environments, we can think of them as technologies. So the specific physiology of the cow allows it to digest grass in ways that we can't, and to produce manure that will nourish the soil as long as we let that happen. We've managed to screw up the soil around the world by using chemical inputs that require the use of more chemical inputs. Um, so multi-species allies can save the day. Um, Anna has talked about what she calls feral technologies, which I think is a fabulous turn of phrase. So imagine, again, these disrupted environments that we increasingly live in. What's growing through the cracks in the sidewalk? What's digesting the things that have been dismissed as waste? Um, what kind of survival strategies can we imagine by focusing on the wild um, amongst us or the feral that sits in between um, stable and unstable? Isabel Stingers is another friend and ally of Donna Haraway's. She's a chemist by training, a philosopher of science, and um, last year produced this wonderful book called um, Another Science is Possible. Again, the subtitle's key, A Manifesto for Slow Science. So along with calm technologies, how about 
slowing down what counts as science. Um, looking back to the future, um, and this is where um, my little talk intersects with the work that I'm doing these days on anthropology of food, wine, and agriculture, especially looking at what's been called biodynamic agriculture, um, crafted by a brilliant eccentric Rudolf Steiner, um, who crafted this in the 1920s when German farmers came to him and said, we can't figure it out. Our plants and animals are no longer thriving. And he said, basically, you have fucked up the soil. <laughs> he said, stop using chemical inputs and consider the effects of these extractive practices that we've been involved in. So he proposed that we take advantage of the technology of the cow um, and the homeopathic um, preparations that he and his followers designed um, include what's called horn manure or prep 500 that involves taking a cow's horn and it must be a cow's horn because it contains hormones that are part of, of this transformative process, packing it with cow's manure, burying it for a season and at the end of that time, the cow manure is transformed into humus, sweet-smelling, fabulous stuff, through the multi-species alliance with bacteria and fungi. This is then diluted and turned into a homeopathic um, fluid that's sprayed on vines and on the soil, and that revives the microbial activity that the chemical inputs have destroyed. Um, so, multi-species technology, horn manure, cow horn, bacteria, fungi, PrEP 500 revitalizes the soil, saves the planet. Biodynamic wine is um, delicious and um, will give you a less severe hangover. So try some. That's all. <laughs>